This video is for senior high history, highlights for pages 385 to 391. So we're looking at the United States in World War II, looking at from how they came from neutrality to entering into the war. Uh, so from the point that Italy invaded Ethiopia in 1935, Congress was desperately attempting to keep the United States out of war. Uh, they had participated in World War I, and they wanted to stay out of it for, uh, for this time around. So they placed an embargo on the shipment of arms to belligerents. Belligerents means nations at war, and uh, advised American citizens against traveling on ships of the warring nations. Um, and in 1936, highlight that Congress made any loans and credits to belligerents illegal. So they weren't going to extend any uh, monetary loans or credit to belligerents. Highlight the Neutrality Act of 1937. Make sure you know that term. Uh, this continued the terms of earlier legislation and adopted the cash and carry principle. So the president could forbid trade with belligerents on American ships and limit trade with warring countries to goods paid for in cash. So they'd have to be paid for in cash and carried from American ports in foreign vessels. So kind of the key there being that uh, American ships would not be carrying the goods to these warring nations, and they hoped to uh, keep themselves from the mistakes of World War I by doing this. Highlight President Roosevelt's policy, and highlight his name, President Roosevelt. Highlight that the United States could not remain indifferent. Highlight October 1937. And highlight quarantine or isolation of nations engaged in acts of aggression. So basically what they wanted to do um, was uh, isolate these nations that were acting uh, out of aggression. Uh, he, Roosevelt cabled Hitler, sent him a telegram in September of 1938 during the Czechoslovakian crisis and was asking him to turn from your course of war. Uh, Hitler basically laughed in his face. Except, no, no, not in his face, because they weren't face to face, but Hitler basically laughed at him. And he, he thought that Roosevelt was uh, a foolish coward, essentially, uh, because he thought that, you know, a, a telegram was going to stop Hitler from conquering Europe. Foolish mistake there, uh, but Roosevelt would learn that lesson very quickly. Uh, highlight the retreat from neutrality. Uh, highlight that this war was not a struggle for empires, but a confrontation between two opposing ideologies. And those two ideologies were democracy and totalitarianism. So the Nazis, with the new areas that they were conquering, they wanted to establish a new world order with the Germans as the master race, the Jews entirely eliminated, and all other people enslaved. So gradually, the United States moved from isolation to direct intervention. On page 386, highlight adoption of Lend-Lease. Highlight the Lend-Lease Act. And for this definition here, highlight sell, lease, lend, or otherwise dispose of war materials to any nation whose defense he felt to be vital to American security. So that was kind of their workaround here. They were officially neutral, but they would support anyone who was in defense of American security. Uh, highlights... Um, Warships that belong to a friendly belligerent could be refitted or repaired in the United States. So uh, Great Britain was fighting against Germany, so they would be considered a friendly belligerent. So if their warships were damaged in the Atlantic, they could send them to a port in the United States in order to be fixed. Uh, so the Lend-Lease Act, uh, it, angered, um, it angered Germany and her allies because they were saying, you know, the United States is claiming to be neutral and yet they're helping people who are fighting against us. So it was a tricky position to be in, but uh, this Lend-Lease Act was a big step in bringing the United States into the war. Highlight rising hostility. Uh, 
So like we said, with the Lend-Lease Act, uh, hostility between the U.S. and the Axis nations increased. So highlight that. Lend-Lease Act, hostility between the United States and the Axis nations increased. Highlight that Axis-owned or Axis-dominated shipping in American seaports was seized. Highlight uh, that they froze all German and Italian assets. Uh, so remember at this point, uh, in a lot of ways, America was still kind of um, the premier banking nation in the world. So a lot of countries had, um, had gold and other things being held in American banks. So they froze those assets for Germany and Italy. Highlight that consulates uh, in the States were closed. And all access diplomats were forced to leave in July of 1941. So they had completely cut off diplomatic relations as well. And that's a huge, huge step uh, that leads to entering a war. Highlight action in the Atlantic. Highlight to ease the pressure on the British, American air and naval bases were established in Greenland in April 1941. And highlight American troops relieved the British garrison on Iceland. And then last paragraph there, uh, just above strained relations with Japan, highlight in November 1941, Congress also repealed the provisions prohibiting American ships from entering war zones. So at this point, November 1941, the United States was on the very verge of war with the Axis powers. Now highlight strained relations with Japan, highlight the Panay incident, Highlight in December, Japanese airmen bombed and sank uh, the American gunboat Panay. And this step made it very clear that uh, Japan would not allow the United States to stand in its way of conquering Asia. Highlight American reaction. Highlight July 1939. So the Panay incident happened in 1937. Highlight July 1939. Highlight that they lent uh, Chiang Kai-shek's nationalist Chinese government $25 million. Uh, highlight 1911 trade treaty with Japan. And they canceled this. Highlight that they placed embargoes on the shipment of oil, aviation gasoline, scrap iron, and steel to Japan. And this was a huge, huge step because Japan was such a tiny island nation and she has very few of these natural resources on her own. Highlight that they were, there was were strengthening of American defenses in the Pacific, such as in the Philippines and Hawaii. Highlight Japanese resentment. Highlight that Japan responded by formally joining the Axis. They wanted a new order in Asia with them on top, just as much as Germany and Italy wanted to be on top in Europe. On the next page, highlight that American citizens were advised to leave the Orient and that Japanese assets in the United States were frozen. And then highlight these three demands that Japan sent to the states. Number one, the United States must abandon all aid to China. Two. It must reverse the policy of military and economic encirclement of Japan. And three, it must cease to interfere with Japan's expansion in Greater East Asia. Uh, but the facts are, you do not make demands of a country that is more powerful than you. And even at this point, uh, without um, fully engaging the military, without having total war production, the United States was still a lot more powerful than Japan. And uh, traditionally and historically, the United States does not take threats very well. So Japan was threatening here, making these demands, and the United States completely refused to comply. Highlight, remember Pearl Harbor. Highlight, America attacked. Highlight, November 1941. At this point, the Japanese dispatched a special envoy to Washington for a, quote, final effort at negotiations. But this was all entirely a ploy. They sent the envoys to Washington to distract from the fact that they were sending a secret naval force to Hawaii. So highlight Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, the home base for America's Pacific Fleet.
highlight December 7th, 1941. Highlight just before 8 o'clock a.m. The sky over Pearl, uh, waves of airplanes appeared in the sky over Pearl Harbor. Highlight that the attack was a complete surprise. They had no idea it was coming. For almost two hours, Japanese bombers, torpedoes, and machine gun fire rained down on Pearl Harbor. Highlight the United States lost more ships than it had lost during World War I in just two hours. Highlight that 18 ships were lost, including eight battleships. 170 airplanes were destroyed on the ground. Over 3,500 servicemen were killed or wounded. And highlight that the Japanese lost only 29 of their 359 waiting airplanes. Of course, one of the worst losses of life was the, uh, the sailors who were on board the USS Arizona. The ship was sunk uh, entirely. Hundreds and hundreds of men were, were trapped on board and they simply couldn't get them out. Great tragedy there. Highlight mistaken Japanese. And highlight that they had failed to anticipate three extremely important things. Make sure you know what these three things are. One, the U.S. aircraft carriers were at sea. So they completely escaped harm. The aircraft carriers were one of the most important parts of the Navy. Two, the raid failed to destroy the repair facilities and fuel reserves at Pearl Harbor. So uh, the ships that were damaged, they were able to repair them uh, mostly right there at Pearl Harbor. And three, most important, the sneak attack on Pearl Harbor united the American people as nothing has before or since. Remember that up to this point, the United States had kept a policy of neutrality. That's mostly because the people did not wish to join the war. And this attack on Pearl Harbor changed that irrevocably. Uh, the entire nation banded together to highlight, uh, defeat the Axis powers and highlight uh, these words, they awakened a sleeping giant and filled him with terrible resolve. And those are the words of a Japanese admiral. They were hoping that this attack would break the resolve of the Americans, break their spirit, and uh, enable them to just keep right on going in Asia. Instead, it did the opposite.